Marhaba. We have been using built-in functions throughout this course, like zeros, max, and sign. User-defined functions work the same way, but we must write the code ourselves. More work? Yes. But more flexibility and power? Absolutely. This slide shows a use of one basic built-in function, max. This command is called the function call. It is where we name the function, provide it the necessary input information, and provide an output variable in which to store the results. Note that a fair bit of code needs to be processed to produce the correct result. MATLAB does not immediately know that 9 is the largest number in this list. It must perform an extensive algorithm. Thankfully, all of that is done in the background, and we can simply pluck out the useful information at the very end. Also, remember that many functions can use different syntax to produce more or different outputs. In this example, the same function name is used, but now it will produce two outputs. A general function could have any number of input and output arguments, including none at all. We just mentioned that a function does work in the background. This is more properly called the function's local workspace, which includes variables that no other script or function will deal with. This may seem like an abstract idea, but you have likely used local workspaces quite often. Here's a simple example. Imagine that you are taking a geometry test and a problem requests that you compute the volume of a cylinder for a given height and radius. The work you might actually write down on the test paper is shown in this box on the left, but that's not all the work you did. Off to the side, on scratch paper or in your calculator, you may have done these steps to convert the height to the proper units. Into this side area, you needed to pass in the information of the original height and pass out the information of the converted height. Similarly, you needed to compute a top somewhere. This is done in a separate scratch area into which you pass in the original radius, do some calculations and conversions, and then pass out the final area. Then, back on the test paper, you finish the problem. It looks simple and organized. Only three steps? Well, there were three big steps with several sub-steps underneath. Connecting this to MATLAB and functions. Think of your test paper as the base workspace. Think of each scratch area as its own separate local workspace. These local workspaces are the domain of functions. They accept input arguments, do some work in the background, and return output arguments. What happens to the in-between calculations within the functions? They get lost. Will there be memory that three feet equals 91.44 centimeters? No, that information will be lost. But the resulting information, the 26268 square centimeters, does get saved and passed back to the base workspace. I emphasize this because it is a vital point for understanding functions. They work in their own local workspaces. Once the function is complete and the code jumps back to the base workspace, all variables within the function's workspace are lost. If you want to use one of these variables later, you must list it as an output argument. However, when we type commands into the command window or run a script, the variables that are created are in the base workspace and are saved in the temporary memory. This slide shows the same basic function that was created in the last video. The full function code is shown in the large box, and an example of using it in the command window is shown below. Notice that when I call the function, I must pass in the appropriate number of input arguments, which is 2 in this case. The variable length old takes on the value of 50 for this one use of the function. Length old never exists in the base workspace, and memory that had ever equaled 50 will be lost. Similarly, the output argument length new never exists in the base workspace, but the value that it held, here 164, gets copied to a variable in the base workspace. In this case, the variable distance ft will hold that 164. You should also notice that a function looks a lot like a script. In fact, the only written difference between the two is this top line. You could open a blank script, type in a top line following the structure, and it will be interpreted as a function. 
And the only operational differences between a script and a function are one, which workspace is being used, and two, the use of input and output arguments. With a script, you never have input arguments. But functions almost always require some input information. One exception to this is the rand command. In its most basic syntax, it just returns a random number between 0 and 1. No input information is needed for that. Any number of functions and scripts can communicate with each other as long as they are on the file directory path. In other words, have them all in your current folder. The top line in any function code file must follow this structure. Begin with the word function, then within brackets, list all the output arguments. If there is only one output argument, you can leave off the brackets. Next is the assignment operator. Then comes the function name. Be sure to follow the same rules as MATLAB variables. Start with a letter and use no spaces or special characters except for an underscore. When saving, the save name must be identical to this function name. Lastly, within parentheses, list all the input arguments. We have emphasized already that variables used in the function's local workspace are lost to memory once function has completed running. So to store any key results, they must be copied to the base workspace as output arguments. There is one other way. You can declare a variable to be global, which allows it to be accessed in any workspace. This is primarily useful for extremely large data sets that you don't want to copy back and forth. This topic won't be explored further here, but if ever needed, some quick research will show you how to do this. Another key idea that you have probably noticed by now is that variable names in a function's workspace do not need to be the same as the corresponding name in the base workspace. Here, you can see the function call as well as the top line in the function itself. In the base workspace, the value stored in h will be copied to the variable named length old in the function's workspace. The input argument for opt isn't even a variable name. It is a fixed number one. The idea is that it is not variables being transferred, but instead values being copied. Similarly, the output argument within the function is called length new, which is being copied over to the base workspace variable named hm. That was a great deal of information on functions. Why do we care? Because ultimately, functions make big problems simpler. Here's a list of some ways. First, you can break down a large task into smaller subtasks. Each of these subtasks can then be independently tested. Pass in some test inputs, make sure the outputs are what you expect, and then you know if that small piece is complete. This makes it much easier to identify a bug rather than scanning a single large script. You may also want to redo some of those subtasks multiple times. With functions, you can do this with a function call in a single line of code. Without functions, you must copy and paste large chunks of code. Further, taking advantage of functions local workspaces protects you from unintended side effects. If a process fails in a local workspace, at least it is not impacting data stored in the base workspace. I encourage you to watch this video posted by MathWorks. It demonstrates a very interesting code that can solve a Sudoku puzzle that is held up to a webcam. You'll notice that the main script is actually fairly simple. The real grunt work is being done by functions in the background.